Hey everybody, Professor Davis here from ChemSurvival.com and the YouTube channel ChemSurvival to talk to you a little bit about bicyclic structures and how they apply to organic chemistry. So let's start by defining that. Now, bicyclic structures will always contain two distinct rings of atoms. And in order to fall into this class, those rings must share at least one atom in common with one another. Uh, those atoms don't all have to be carbon, although I'm going to show you mostly examples today that have uh, carbon only in that scaffold. It is possible to have oxygen, nitrogen, and even more exotic heteroatoms in bicyclic structures. And finally, of course, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about polycyclic structures early on, just to show you some examples of more complex molecules. But they follow similar rules, and that's why we give you this introduction during your organic chemistry course. So even though some of these molecules may seem a little small and simple, the truth is they get very large and complex. So this is a foundation you're building to understand some really cool molecules. So there are three different classes of bicyclic structures that we talk about. Uh, the first of these is Spiro. And they're categorized by having a single bridgehead carbon, or a single carbon which holds those two rings together. And an example of a uh, compound that you might find in nature with this motif is cannabis spearhan, which is from Colorado's new favorite plant, the cannabis plant. And there is our spiro motif right there, two rings sharing a single atom in common. Another class is fused bicyclics, and these are characterized by having uh, two adjacent shared atoms, or two adjacent bridgehead carbons. Uh, a great example of a compound which has this motif is a polycyclic compound, testosterone. And just like uh, itself and many of its chemical cousins, which are very powerful hormones uh, in the human body, they contain several. Uh, here's just one of the fused ring systems within a testosterone molecule. Uh, finally, we have bridged uh, bicyclics. And bridged bicyclics are characterized by having two non-adjacent shared carbons, or two non-adjacent bridgehead carbons. And an example of a scaffold which looks like this would be the molecule eucalyptol. Uh, so all of these molecules that I've shown you so far are fairly powerful, uh, biologically active molecules. So these are things we want to understand. And it is their scaffold, it is their, their unusual uh, bicyclic or polycyclic scaffold that gives them some of their properties. Okay, so let's take a closer look at these three classes of compounds and why we call them bicyclic. To do this, I'm going to take uh, two rings of cyclopentane, and I've removed the hydrogen atoms for clarity, and I'm going to combine them in three different ways to create my spiro, fused, and bridged compounds. So let's start by making a spiro with the top two. When I bring them together and join them at a single carbon, remember I get one bridge head. So this will be spiro. Now I'm going to take my two and fuse them together, creating two bridgehead carbons. And when they're adjacent like they are in this example, this is a fused compound. And finally, I can join the same two to create a bridged motif, which has two non-adjacent bridgeheads. So again, we call this bridged. Okay, so this is the, the origin of the bicyclic name, is you can create these by taking two simple cyclic structures and joining them together in a specific way. Okay, so let's get down to business now, naming these structures that we've created by fusing two five-membered rings together. We'll start with the Spiro compound. As is, will be the case with all three of these, we'll start by cataloging all of the bridges and their lengths in atoms. So in the case of a Spiro compound, I have a bridge of four atoms on the left, a bridge of four atoms on the right, and of course my Spiro carbon in the center. So I'm going to begin naming this compound by telling my reader that I have a Spiro motif. Next, I'm going to place brackets into my name, and I'm going to list the lengths of each bridge inside of the brackets. So this is a Spiro 4-4 compound. Finally, I give my compound a name by tallying the total number of atoms within the bicyclic system, including the bridge heads and all of the bridges. So my Spiro compound here has nine total atoms, making it a no-name. This is Spiro 44 no-name. Now let's take a look at the fused bicyclic. My fused compound has an obvious bridge of three and another obvious bridge of three. But notice that I now have two bridge head carbons, and they're joined directly, which means I can think of that as being a bridge of zero. 
So to distinguish this from a spiro compound, I first call it a bicyclo, and then just like with the spiro compound, I'll place brackets with a list of all the different bridge lengths within the scaffold. So here I have a bicyclo 330 compound. Finally, just as before, I tally all of the atoms within the bicyclic system, including bridge heads and bridge carbons, and I find that I have eight. So this is a bicyclo 330 octane molecule. Okay, finally, let's take a look at our bridged compound. My bridged compound has a bridge of two, a bridge of two, and another bridge consisting of one atom. So I'm going to call this, just as I did previously, a bicyclo compound. And I'll also place my bridge lengths in the brackets. Now, what distinguishes bridge from fused compounds is that all of the numbers within the brackets are non-zero. Finally, I'll name this based on the total number of atoms within the bicyclic system. In this case, seven atoms, so this is a bicyclo 221 heptane. So you can see now how this naming system works. The first element of the name tells us the number of bridge heads. The second element of the name tells us the size of each of those bridges that are connected by the bridge heads. And finally, the last tells us the total number of atoms within that particular system. So that's all for now, folks. And you can imagine these things get a lot more complicated. So get back to the books and read up some more on how to name some of the more complex bicyclic systems that you'll find as you go through organic chemistry. Hopefully we'll get a chance to cover that in another video. But for now, that's all I've got for you. I'm Professor Davis, and I'll see you on the next video. Take a little bit of time to see what I have going on on the web. You can check out my own website at www.chemsurvival.com. Or, if you'd like, subscribe to my YouTube channel, Chem Survival. Like me on Facebook, also at Chem Survival. And follow me on Twitter at Chem underscore Survival. Don't forget that underscore when you go to Twitter.